Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in Brick Township, New Jersey. I met up with Paul and Deborah, and they're going to give us a tour inside and out of their DIY camper van. So join us. Hello, Paul and Deborah. Welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hello, this is Paul and Deb from Brooklyn, Connecticut. I'd like to show you my 2018 Transit 350 Heavy Duty. It has the EcoBoost motor, it's the extended in the high top. It has dual wheels. Also it has driver's seat is power. We put leather seats in the front. Well, I'd like to show you the inside of our van. Here we have the gravity water feed for a 23 gallon fresh water tank. We have the marine woven vinyl flooring, which I love. There's no seams in it. It can handle expansion and contraction. Typically you find in vans. We put the l track system in we have two electric folding bikes we're able to fit them in this area rather tightly but they do fit and the general layout we have the kitchen right behind the driver's seat we have two beds on each side my wife's bed is shorter but it slides out for more comfort sleeping the table will swing around for dinner and then easily stow away over the countertop and it's locked in by that little bracket you see what I try to do here is I don't like a bunch of chores of whether putting window blinds up, putting a table away. So I wanted it to be very easy to uh, convert from dining to sleep mode to living mode. Um, how you doing, bud? A strange dog. Um, <laughs> coming inside, we have a rear bath layout. The full width of the van is a bath. It's a dry bath, which means the shower is, is uh, separated from the rest of the uh, bathroom where the, uh, not typically you see in a class B, where when you take a shower, the toilet gets wet, the sink gets wet. In this case, it doesn't. Underneath this bed, we have the uh, Slim Isotherm water heater. It, capable of heat in 185 degree water from strictly the motor. It has an option to be plugged in also, which is controlled by a switch on the wall. We don't plug it in because we find we never need to have it plugged in. But if you have it plugged in, this is a switch to control the hot water heater. This switch is here to call, this controls the LED, the overhead lights, and this one is the LED lights on all the windows. We also have electric bed that goes up and down. So when you're watching TV, or in this case, a projector TV, um, it's quite comfortable. We have a reading light up here on each side. And we also have power curtains to make it easy to uh, close off the window shades. You want to close out the front part of the van. Projector screen that serves a double purpose. It provides a, a blackout from the front part of the van to the back. We have a projector that I use for my iPhone. Um, I get direct TV for my iPhone and we can uh, TV and above this let me move this up again um, we have a cabinet for larger items it goes rather deep it's all stuffed up with things going around we have a little cabinet here we have a microwave it does take a lot of juice it runs on a, a thousand eight hundred watts uh, and I have a 2000 watt inverter so that means nothing else can be on uh, if I did another van, I would go with a 3,000 watt inverter. Since I have 560 amp hours of batteries, it would be a more balanced system. We have a sink with, we have a double type of faucet system. Is This little faucet has its own separate fresh water drinking and cooking water. Uh, my wife's a nurse and she knows that you shouldn't really be drinking from the uh, the big tank that might be have water sitting around too long, but this is good for washing dishes, showering, etc., etc. 
Below here, we keep uh, induction cooktop. And if you're gonna use that little sink, you would probably have your hot, your, uh, any, any way from one gallon to five gallon um, fresh drinking water tank there. We do have a sliding uh, spice wine rack or whatever you want to use it for. It's quite handy. And we have a ISO temp refrigerator, which is four point, I believe 4.2 liters with a small um, freezer. We love it, about the right size. We have a cabinet uh, drawer for the uh, nice forks and bottle openers, wine openers, etc. On the sliding door and behind the galley, we have windows that open up, give you a little bit of air with the combined with the max fan, especially for cooking. It, it's great. The dining room table, I bought this at the uh, Reclaim Rack at IKEA 2, restock rack, and it's basically a draw front, uh, a door front from a Kia cabinet. It's uh, stainless steel, and it has the Lagoon mount, which I modified because the way it originally was, it would be interfering with the kitchen wall. It wouldn't work. And I like the idea that I don't have to store it behind the, uh, the, uh, and you gotta open it up. We slide it down. And then we crank this down, we crank this down, and we got ourselves uh, a dining table. We sit on each side. And this little thing here, it secures the arm when you're traveling, so it doesn't smash into the window. I put stainless steel uh, ceiling to maximize the height. Uh, I think it has a nice look to it. Um, uh, the headroom is about 6'6". Six, six. I'm 6'3 six, and a half. Um, so there's plenty of room. And you notice there's no air conditioner in here that you're bumping your head on. This is a mini split. Um, and the outside unit we'll show you later. This is the best part of the van. Um, the reason I like it so much, first of all, it's very quiet. It's um, very advanced inverted technology, so it takes very little power, maybe half the amount of juice that a conventional AC does, but mostly it also serves as a heater. It will heat down to minus five degrees Fahrenheit. And <clears throat> we used it a few nights ago. We got down to 28 degrees. Um, we ran it all night and we still had 20% of power left. And it kept a perfect, 70 degrees all night. It has a lot of functions to it. Um, just like a house unit, you can use it just as a fan, just a dehumidifier. It'll go into a quiet sleep mode that's super quiet. You can barely hear it. Um, it it's just, they're, they're incredible, these mini splits. And so, I, my previous fan had a, a rooftop unit and it was so noisy, so inefficient, it wouldn't, uh, the heat pump only worked down to about 40 degrees, mostly useless. Um, so I'm very happy with this unit. Um, we have a Max Air fan, and that's uh, controlled with this. It's just a, a um, typical um, on off. They're not the quietest, uh, they're not bad, but they're not the quietest unit. Far noisier than um, mini split. I have three large drawers here for storage doors. And uh, I used, uh, these are from Ikea. And I went to their discount rack and 60% of the walls and the drawers and I found at the discount rack, which for example, I believe these door fronts were six dollars. Um, so that's, you know, if you go shopping around uh, IKEA, check out the discount rack. Um, I went with, this is from Lowe's, this is a, uh, my wife picked this out. I love it now. At first I thought it was over the top, but when I see it all in here, I like the contrast. Um, 
Now these panels, because of the automated shades, I'll put the shades up. Um, the, uh, these have this section, this section, and all these sections have to be removable. So they're Velcroed in. If you ever have a problem with the shades, um, you, you need to be able to fix them. Uh, the, uh, one of the, I think, one of the best things I did in this van compared to the other one typically when they box out the window on the van the bottom sills up to here but the van and the transit I don't know about other vans it actually goes down for another six inches before it comes out so I said I want that space and it was it's great it's great because it gives me elbow room when I'm sleeping you're not right against the wall it also serves as a little table for your snacks or whatever uh, especially when you're watching TV, you need a place to have your chips, your, your soda, or whatever you, you're, you're uh, drinking and eating. Same on this side. That's where my electrical um, circuit breakers are. The inverter has a vent for the inverter. And these, these are, I got this idea using magnets from George at Humboldt Road. I love his videos too. And I heard he lives right down the road from here. I might go visit him. And this is where my panel box is. I have the AC and DC circuit breakers there. Um, underneath the uh, bottom of the kitchen is the DC DC charger. And I have 430 amp hour valence batteries underneath here. I want to show you how my wife's bed works. Um, like I said, I try to minimize the chores we need when we get ready for bed. And her, she does have two drawers here. Um, and I have six drawers on this side. But her bed, you can see the two handles, you, you pull it out. And it does make it kind of narrow here. And then you just slip her cushion down here. Her favorite bunnies there and then the um, little back cushion is right here and the reason we're made in two parts is because quite often I use that half for my back here and it's more versatile but as you can see she also has a bed the same level gives her an extra elbow room you want to sleep um, this is her side and that's why the cabinets are low and these cabinets are higher because this is my side I can show you underneath how it all works. I removed the mattress so you can see what's going on underneath. I'm using four um, draw, heavy duty draw slides. One, two, three, four. And I made these so they open up independently. And the reason being is as you slide this drawer out, you slide a drawer there, you can see my four valence 138 amp hour batteries and here's my inverter um, so you have access to that and on the other side we have less stuff we have the same deal that slides out the draw slides out but you have the panel we do have a little room for storage in here um, if you want to utilize it it's a little bit awkward getting that because you would have to remove the mattress but you can get at it. You also can get at it by removing this panel. In any van, storage is always a, a premium. So we try to maximize the amount of storage. I managed to get six drawers. And these are IKEA, and they're very smooth, very durable, lightweight. They're metal, so they're not gonna be affected by the humidity. Uh, but they work really smooth. And if you've ever been to a Kia store, you can see everybody opening and closing their drawers all day long, seven days a week, and they still hold up. So uh, I love them. And we can put the bed down and move on to the bathroom. So we went with just a simple curtain, same as the other van. It doesn't rattle, it's light, and uh, we like it. Um, so it does the job for privacy. Now, I'm very proud of my shower. Uh, I love 
uh, the shower it came with uh, I put a water tower uh, sh shower in it and this is more than just show it actually is it saves a lot of water in two aspects one is as you put it in the spray mist mode you use minimum amount of water but enough to soap yourself down and wash yourself and then you can either use the overhead um, waterfall shower head or the handheld um, with on off to uh, rinse yourself out another way we save water is I ordered it with a tub fill you can see the where the tub fill was and obviously this isn't a tub and the reason I ordered it with a tub fill is you while you're waiting for hot water you typically are wasting water and you're filling up your gray tank while you're waiting for the hot water to get to the shower head um, in this case we turn it in tub mode and instead of coming out through that hole we ran the line all the way back to the tank so we're recirculating the water while we're waiting for the water to get hot at the uh, shower without wasting any hot water or filling up the gray tank so we usually turn that on for 30 seconds and then you know when you switch it to your shower you instantly got hot water um, you're saving say three gallons a minute um, you're saving a gallon and a half in 30 seconds and we also have this nifty uh, you always have clothes that you don't want wrinkled or don't want them in a the drawer or a jacket and stuff so we have this uh, collapsible um, you just push that up push the clothes in on it but it's handy for that we used a space where the window would be on a passenger van and we made ourselves a little niche for um, uh, shampoos and stuff and a little stainless steel bar to hold them in we have a no excuse me a nautilus uh that you see in quite a lot of these vans a nautilus uh, shower door there it goes um i used a i'm a retired home builder and i always like the shrewdest system in the in the showers made in the homes these days they're lightweight they flex and basically it's a styrofoam base that's sloped and it comes integrated with a drain and then they have a wall system that waterproofs the plywood um, and then i cover it with a, a doom derma i believe it's called i got it from lowe's it also is a waterproof material so i continued the uh same tile on this wall and uh and that's it the uh, beauty about this shower setup is that you're not getting the toilet wet you got plenty of space it's almost like an apartment uh, bathroom um, i do have a medicine cabinet and these control the uh the lights inside the leds this is uh quite noisy but it's the a vent that's behind the shower tower that you'll see later that exhausts in the bottom of the van to get the moisture out of it i didn't want to put any more holes in the roof uh, of the van um i have a drawer unit here be able to have little cubbies in here i have a, this is also a power um independently from the front uh a power shade i created a little cubby hole uh to place different things in here's a power rod we have um, another cabinet for towels and everything and the toilet is a Dometic um, 320 it's a flush type um, it has a I believe it's a seven gallon black water tank um, right below it this thing came with a rear AC that's the rear AC of it um, which cools the van twice as quick this um, AC unit came with the van this was a previously former life was a 15 passenger lemo van um, and being in Florida they ordered it with a special rear AC and a front AC but this only works when the motor's running but it on a hot day um, say coming from the beach a black van like this can get very hot this will cool down the van twice as quick by having two AC units
Um, it also has a rear um, heat unit too. If you're in a cold climate, it'll warm up twice as quick. And that's um, the secondary heaters underneath the, uh, the uh, passenger seat. What's important when you're building these vans, um, I learned this lesson from the first van, to the, uh, that you need access to everything in case you have to repair something. And this panel comes out so you can get to the plumbing underneath and all the connections. Um, all the, these panels come out if you have to fix the uh, power uh, shades. And you got to think of that throughout the van. It has to be able to be maintained. And I learned that from uh, George from Humble Road. He's big on that. Um, so thanks to George. Yeah, I'd like to show you the cab area. Um, I replaced the front cloth seats with leather. Um, and I also put a small uh, cabinet up right behind the driver's seats for maps um, and uh, whatever you want to put in there. And the uh, the leathers um, were catskin um, leather. Uh, the rest of the van is stock. It has a backup camera. Yeah, I like to show you the outside of the van. We try to make it as stealth as possible. Um, not that I'm going to be sleeping on a street, but I like to I don't personally like a bunch of holes in the van. As you can see, this van from the outside pretty much looks the same as when I bought it. It looks like a airport limo van, um, 15 passenger. Um, there's not a lot of things added to it, but they're all here. For example, this is a condensate line for the mini split, um, which pours water on a hot, humid day. I have the city water fill underneath here and coming around if you look underneath you have the gray and black water discharge and you can see the uh, seven gallon black water tank and between the spare wheel and the axle there's a 23 gallon gray water tank and further down the van, this is a 30 amp shore power connector, which we rarely use because we have um, so much battery power with 560 amp hours of battery. The only other things you see on the outside, we have a vent on top of the roof for the uh, plumbing system. And you barely can see it, we have a, the uh, max fan that's black that fits right in. But it's basically, Unless you study it, it looks just like a stock limo van. And this is what makes this van really different. So I want to show you the, what's behind these doors. Um, remember the bathroom's in the back, left to right. The shower will be here. The sink's here and the toilet's here behind this wall. And on this side, it's a little bit of storage. I keep the... Uh, the sewer discharge lines. This is the the vent that comes behind the shower tower and exhaust underneath. I keep this um, pressure control um, and a filter as I'm adding the uh, fill tank for fresh water. Um, extra set of battery cables. I probably could fit, move this over and get some uh, beach chairs in here. Um, this is L track that you can have find all kinds of connectors and move them around it. They're, they're a very nice product. We waterproof this whole back because we have this mini split back here. And the only negative thing I can find about this mini split is you need to keep at least this side door open. You can close this side, excuse me, and and just leave that open. Um, it's all waterproof, but it does need a lot of air. And you can't simply put a vent in the back door. It needs air coming around the side, to the top and the bottom. And we did slope the bottom of the floor. So if it does rain, it flows out, but this can be totally um, out in the elements. And these are designed to be outside. These are 
designed to last 20 years in a house. Um, the question you would have is, can they take the bumping of the roads? The, uh, because it, in a home setting, it would be stationary. But when they ship these, a lot of these are made in China or Asia somewhere. And they ship on a boat, trucking, tossed around. They gotta be able to handle um, that type of abuse. So I'm pretty confident. I've had this for two years. Never, I haven't had a problem yet. Um, like I said, they're super quiet, super efficient. They not only cool, they heat too. They're all in one unit and they cost approximately $700. I went with an Aircon. It's a 12,000 BTU, but it's too much. I would go with a 9,000 BTU. It, I got to keep it at the lowest settings most of the time. Um, this, the reason I went with Aircon is they're the smallest unit I could find that's 110. Uh, it's important to be 110 instead of 220. It saves you a lot of trouble um, with electrical. Um, but for $700, you're getting AC and heat. It's, it's great. Uh, and at very efficient operating, uh, energy-wise. I can't say enough about how much I like this uh, mini split. When we ran the mini split, we ran the uh, lines in this wall, up the back of the ceiling, in the cavity of the van, and we fished it where you, you saw it on the inside. Um, it's a little bit tricky. You need to have a string attached to the copper lines and you have to have someone pushing it. So you need two people. And then it doesn't come, it comes pre-charged, but it has to be um, evacuated by a professional um, to get all the air out. And, and uh, that cost about three three hundred dollars to have somebody uh, test it all out and get it all running for me. A professional uh, HVAC guy. I want to show you what's under the hood here on how we um, tapped in the uh, hot water lines for the isotherm water heater. And that hooks up right there. And it's simple. You have the heater hose in and out. You tee it off. And we do have where we can shut them off when we don't want it to circulate. Like if I'm driving a lot, there's no sense in having it constantly circulate. And also for, for uh, if you ever had a problem with your lines, you'd be able to shut them off and still uh, not lose all your coolant. So it's very important to have shutoffs on both ends. But it's simply running them from the in and out of the uh, the uh, heater hose in and heater hose out to the tank and uh, then we added uh, we ran a direct from the alternator uh, aligned to the DC DC charger that's underneath the, the sink and we put a 250 amp fuse here and it's very important to have a professional I have a, a, a friend that's very good with this much better than I am with electrical um, he basically uh, did electrical for, the, for me on this van. But with this kind of power, you better know what you're doing. So uh, you gotta have the right wire sizes, the right fuses, and uh, it's, uh, it's something you shouldn't do unless you know a lot about. Uh, and electrical is not my thing, so I, I did hire that out. The rest I did, the plumbing, all the carpentry, and uh, I didn't do the upholstery on the seats, I had that. Uh, the bed's made up, but everything else I did. Paul, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your beautiful DIY camper van. What inspired you to build your own? Why not just go to an RV dealership and buy one of their camper vans? Well, first of all, it wasn't my idea to even have an RV. It was my wife's uh, idea because we had uh, more and more problems getting a hotel near the beach where we live. Most of the time they sold out on weekends and she said, why don't we get a little RV and, and use that as a hotel. So we went to an RV show and I'm 6'4 and most of them, the beds were too short, the shower was too small and the price was too high. So um, we looked at a bigger one and my wife didn't want it. She, she wanted one she could drive. So. We forgot about the idea for a while, but I thought about it at breakfast once, and I started drawing out what I would 
like for a small RV. So this is what I came up with. If the beds are big enough, the shower is big enough, and uh, and that's how we got into that. And I love the RV world. I was surprised how much I like it. I wish I would have done it 20 years ago. When there's van chassis available, ProMaster, the Mercedes Sprinter, the Chevy Express, and the Ford Transit, what made you decide this one over some of the other platforms that are available? Well, the first thing I did was I looked at the uh, size. I'm 6'4", so the Transit is the tallest, the highest headroom inside. You start off with 6'8", you end up with 6'6", 6 6'5", 6 by the time you insulate it and everything. And uh, it's two inches taller than the Mercedes. Another thing is I wanted um, something that I could have it fixed if I'm in Wyoming, Montana, there's Ford dealers everywhere uh, in the United States, especially out there. So, it, and I didn't want diesel because of the high maintenance costs. You save a couple miles to the gallon, but you pay more for diesel. You have to add an additive. And the more I studied the transit, it was, it was uh, um, the right fit for me, size-wise, uh, maintenance-wise. And the price of these transits are far less than a Mercedes. And, and me personally, I think they ride better, they handle better, and especially without the AC on top, I don't have 100 pounds on top, it makes cornering much better. Also, it helps in wind resistance, miles per gallon, and by having the AC not on the top, I can fit a whole lot of solar panels if I choose to. Right now, I have never needed, I've never run out of power. When I do, I'm gonna add solar panels. But the way we camp and travel, um, we never needed uh, uh, the solar panels. Uh, you mentioned insulation, but I don't think we talked about it in the video. What type of insulation did you run inside? <clears throat> well, the first thing I did, I went with uh, spray foam. It's rather costly. Um, and with so many windows in this van, I said, I need a good heating system and cooling system to compensate for all the glass. And this mini split does it. So I figured I can get away with just, um, I went with rock wall insulation. It, it's inexpensive, but it doesn't cause mold. You don't want to use fiberglass. And as a home builder, as opposed to what I see a lot of van builders doing, in homes, we never put a vapor barrier on the inside of the wall. We let it breathe. Um, that's a no-no in the housing business, and I believe it's a no-no in the van business. So I don't believe in the bubble wrap sealing it, because if any water gets trapped, it's trapped, and it can cause a lot of problems. You want it to breathe, because the outside shell of a van is basically uh, a vapor barrier. It does have some weep holes in it, but it won't allow the van to dry from the inside and out. You can have a problem, and moisture has a way of getting everywhere. Whether you seal it, 100% you never get 100% so that's my advice and then uh, just one last follow-up question if you were to build another now this is number two yeah what would you do different next well time? I'm already started a new bill uh, I didn't tell you this but what I would like is the thing that bugs me about this van is it sits in the yard too much whereas it's basically not an everyday runner and being retired, I want to still have something like a pickup and use it every day. And then we want to go camping, we'll be able to go camping. Same vehicle. Um, so another thing I want is to be able to go off-road, have it four-wheel drive, because I do live in New England. So I already ordered it. It's coming in next month. It's a 2021 all-wheel drive transit that's 30 inches shorter. And the beds will swing up, but it will have uh, some unique features. And I'll have Pat do another video when I'm done with that. Um, but I'm excited about it. I'll be able to use it every day. And then on weekends, we, in 10 minutes, it goes from work mode to camper mode. And uh, uh, that's coming down the road soon. Well, Paul, thank you very much for taking the time to stop by New Jersey on your way on your trip down south. To visit us here. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it, Thanks and I'll see watching. you soon. Thanks for watching.